The next era of Giga is through this door. Oh yeah, Giga Hall Part 20. We're gonna have to do something special. Welcome everyone back to the Giga Hall Saga. I can't believe we're already to the 20th part in this series. That's pretty crazy. It has been about a year and a quarter, a year and a third about. And I just want to say thank you guys for the support on the entirety of this series. I really appreciate it. It's been very successful. And I hope to continue on with these because they're great and super fun to make. It's natural. I get stuff in. I put it in a little cache. And then after I accumulate so much, I'm like, hey, let's just unbox it all at once and make a video about it and kind of talk about what I got. And then you might see some of that pop up in a future review. And it just kind of flows nicely. So I appreciate your support in making these videos pop. Possible. We're going to try and make this one special. It's going to be long and might spruce it up somehow some way throughout this video. So stay tuned. Let's get on with it, guys, with the stuff that's already kind of out of the box. Let's get the lamp on. How about that? Let's get some better lighting going. How does that sound, Mr. Docket? We got a whole bunch more factory customs that just came out in the factory custom brochure pamphlet. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, they just pop up on AliExpress and slash or eBay. And that's how you know that they've come out. This one is awesome. I'm a big fan of it. It's based on a Tomica release of Lightning McQueen, almost with the exact same decals and tires, but in the Mattel body. And I think it looks fantastic. Really nice and unique and something a little bit different. Again, that is what the factory customizers are able to capitalize on, stuff that Mattel hasn't done, maybe using Tomika's resources and kind of copying them, albeit you know not super legal, but providing something that a lot of collectors would be interested in that they otherwise would not be able to get. Here's another one that almost has the exact same decals as a Tomika release, the gold, I think this was for a Lightning McQueen day, not this past year, 2022, but 2021. Yeah, because this past year they did the Cherry Blossom ones, which of course they also made factory customs out of. But yeah, this guy looks great. It's like a gold Cars 1 special Lightning McQueen, Cars 3 decals. Yeah, it's a whole mismatch. I love the tires that they did for them. So I probably will do reviews of all these different factory customs at some point. Here's a pretty traditional one, just yellow Cars 3 Lightning McQueen to go along with the yellow Cars 2 McQueen. I don't think, yeah, they never did a yellow Cars 1 McQueen though. And they're all pretty good quality, not perfect. Everything's a little bit different. You could kind of see that, oh, the eyes look a little bit different from the Mattel version. The hood decal is not centered there, but that's just kind of their quality control peeking through. And you guys know I love to get two of all these. This one I got three of because I thought it was really cool and novel. And that is the concept art Lightning McQueen from Cars 3. This is how he was supposed to look. And then they changed up the storyline so that McQueen did not end up getting sponsored by Dynaco for the Florida 500. And it ended up going to, well... He didn't end up completing the race for one, and he also didn't end up, you know, getting sponsored by Danico at all. Cruz did, you know, so they switched up the story quite a bit. I admit I'm a big fan of the storyline, although it doesn't make much sense for, you know, text to be just like, oh, hey, on the spur of the moment, let's paint you up in blue real quick and send you out there. Last minute decision. It doesn't make all that much sense, but hey, does it make that much sense for Cruz to be one minute driving out of the stadium, the next minute winning the entire thing, and then also by virtue McQueen winning it? Like, I don't know. Not quite sure how I feel about it all, but I would have rather seen this even if it was a little bit more unrealistic. And the funny thing about this is that I actually loved it so much that I had a custom one done. So, <laughs> should have just waited. I think it was like three years ago now, though. So, I should have just waited to get these factory customs for way cheaper. But yeah, there's a few more in there. You guys know me. Again, I love getting extras of these. Plus, factory customs are you know very possible to become super rare in the future. That happened with a lot of those gold chrome ones. And you guys know, a lot of factory customs become you know worth hundreds of dollars. And I think some of these are liable for that as well. And especially considering how cheap they are right now, like $7, might as well buy a couple, right? I'm also trying to beef up my mini adventures collection and I thought this one's really cool having Eugene Karbareski and Todd Marcus in the same pack. 
That's no stall. He looks a little orange versus the red. So that's interesting. But yeah, Eugene looks really good. Tank coat, no stall, mini adventures. A very thick card, by the way. These are thick, solid cards from back in the day. And it shows on the back here a bunch of other ones that came out. This one's very rare. The Monster Truck McQueen and Chick Hicks. I don't really know much about the rarity of these. But yeah, the haulers tend to be a little bit more valuable. But the rest of them kind of float around that like $15 to $20 range. Some of them cheaper, some of them more. But yeah, I thought this one was pretty cool looking. Great condition. And yeah. Nice couple characters. Then we have this two pack. Uh, this one I actually found at Walmart. You'll see it in the next hunt video. Nothing too special here. I'll probably unbox it and review it soon. Or maybe you've already seen the review of it because this is Giga Hall Part 20. I haven't even posted 18 yet. That's how ahead of you know these I am right now because of the fact that I'll record them once I get a whole bunch of stuff, edit them, upload them, and then they'll just sit there until I find a good moment to release them because I could have released 18 a long time ago, but it would have been too close to 17. Didn't want to oversaturate the market of Giga Halls. And then Mattel just absolutely slammed me with all these new cases because there was a drought there from like April to May. Nothing was coming out. Then here we get June and case J and A H and G all come out at the same time and then we got a bunch of reveal videos to do that take up a whole weekend and so it makes it so I have no idea when I'm going to post case or Giga Hall 18 probably within the next week here but Giga Hall Part 20 might not see the light of day until September. I mean I'm going to probably get this out hopefully maybe end of August early September but yeah I'm recording this on July second or something so yeah it's pretty crazy but i wanted to toss it out there so you might already have seen this video but yeah this one's just waiting to be open as you can see there the card is in pretty bad shape all right what else all right so yeah this came from amazon i will do my review of this in november this is the 2023 mini racers advent calendar i don't like it i'll tell you right now i don't like the look of it this is the only new mini and it looks like crap it's Doc Hudson with like a wreath painted on his hood. It's not even like an actual wreath. It's painted. It looks like, I don't know, we got some blue tires, some red barrels. Yay, yippee. It's a nice tower. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> 25 play pieces. I don't know, guys. I'm just a little disillusioned with the mini calendars the last couple of years, this included, just because they're reusing a lot of the same parts. I know these two are new. They have done flows before. The green bases are kind of nice. I guess the fact that you could make it look like this, you could make it look like the tower, you could make it look like this. That's creative and cool, but eh, not really my type of tea, I guess, my cup of tea. All right, now let's move on to what's in the boxes here. Oh yeah, see, I haven't even looked to see if what came in these boxes is what I ordered, so hopefully it is. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to bark down some doors bark down some doors bark up some trees knock down some doors post humusly all right here we go van with stickers is it the air or is it the real one it is the air yes but yeah still a nice one to have on perfect mint card of course most of the van with sticker chases released in 2010 did not have the sticker which is pretty bad. That's quite the blunder on Mattel's part. And it made the actual version extremely rare. Speak of the devil. Bam. There you go. This is the real one here. So I found a nice cheap lot on eBay recently that had both of them. And so I figured why not snag it because I'd always want to have this one in the package. This one's super rare because it has the sticker. Yeah, I remember when I was like nine years old, I got that and I got the one without the sticker. I was like, what the hell is this, mom? <laughs> and my mom was like, oh, no. And then I finally discovered like, oh, yeah, that's not supposed to be like that oopsies all right here we go moving right along this is a mercari purchase i believe a couple movie moments singles in here the ones with the accessories i'm just kind of a fiend for these i love buying them and like never opening them because they are very rare i need to open one of these one of these days though so you have here strip weathers the king with pit stop barrier 
So yeah, to this day, I have several of these. I probably have four or five of these in the package and I have yet to open up one of them to get out that pit stop barrier. I just can't bring myself to open up something so rare just for a piece of plastic. But that being said, it would look pretty cool on my display. However, they have done a pit stop barrier for the King since then, just a little bit different. I think it was in a calendar. It might have been a calendar. Not quite sure. I can't quite remember right now, but they have done a different version of this. I think Cal Weathers might even have a pit stop there. Yeah, he does from a calendar. And then they did do one for the King, but I'm just blanking on how they released the one for the King. Oh my God. I can't believe I'm forgetting. Either way, this one's different and exclusive to this pack. You know, I might as well show you guys while I have them right behind me, but it is really bothering me. I can't remember how this one was released. You guys got to let me know in the comments. How was this one released? Was it in advent calendar as well? But either way, you could tell that they're different. So it still gives me a reason to open this. And then here's the one for Cal Weathers that, yeah, this one was definitely in a mini racers advent calendar. Probably one of the first ones that they ever did. So yeah, that's that. And then I have a Sage Vander spin here. Now this one is just to keep in the package because I do have the pit stop barrier for this opened up. I actually got it loose, I believe, or just in the blister. So there was no guilt, <laughs> no blood shed when I had to open it or because I didn't have to open it, right? So that was good. And then, yeah, of course, there's the Chick Hicks one that I still need to figure out what to do with as well. Do I crack one open? Do I try and get one loose? Because there really aren't that many, if any, out there loose. So it's a bit of a pickle for me, you know? It's a little bit of a pickle. All right, got a big box here, so I'm just gonna open this, just grab this item here real quick. It is the obligatory once per giga haul Battle Force 5 item, and it is the final battle pack that I needed. Zelix and the White Saber, pretty ugly looking, but just something to you know check off the box, check off the list, and keep in the package. They did do, I think, yeah, the Water Slaughter and the Reverb, and I think they did Fangor and the Buster Tank. Have those, just needed this one, so yay. They're very easy to store too, because they're so thin. It's a nice looking package. All right, moving right along here, we got another box. Oh, this is from Get Me Collectibles. Perfect time to give my plug to Get Me Collectibles. Check out his eBay store linked in the description below. And, his email, if you want to ask about anything in specific, like a case, which he does have, he does get in those full cases that I unbox on the channel. So if you want to do that yourself, definitely bark up his tree, chirp a bit. Yeah, so I got this air from him. This is a pretty sweet air, actually. I've never seen a wheel like this before. Check this out. It's like completely missing the inner insert there, I believe. Like it's missing the bling wheel and it's just the tire just crazy i've never quite seen something like that before usually i'll see you know a wheel that's not painted but this is just completely missing that insert so yeah pretty cool can't quite tell how it looks on the other side like it's really right up against the card so it's hard to tell but yeah that's really cool got some other stuff on the back here remember when they put just dozens of cards on the backs of the packagings and Look really cool. Look at that. That is just a classic 2006 image right there and there. What else is kind of a 2006 image here? Sally is. Everyone else looks pretty normal. Sheriff is a 2006 image, that's for sure. Yeah, Yeti right there with the blue treads and the yellow lights. Oh, yeah. Nostalgia right there, baby. All right, moving right along. What is in this box? Oh, I know what's in this box. This is a new item. This is gonna be one of those items that evokes some or invokes some nostalgia, but is brand new. Now, for whatever reason, I didn't go through and like cut the tape on <laughs> all these items. But hey, it's Giga All Part 20. We're gonna go back to our roots. Giga All Part 1 and kind of 2, I like literally did not prepare anything. I just opened the boxes straight in the video. And so there's a lot of cuts in that video, lots of fast forwards and whatnot. But yeah, this one wasn't too bad actually. Yeah, and it is the new 2023 two pack of Red and Stanley. 
using the blisters. The blisters are back for some two packs. Indeed they are. If the cars in them are big enough, they are going to go for the full blister. So Chief Dis and Jeremy will also receive this treatment. And yeah, it's kind of crazy to see. It doesn't look right to see this blister on the Red Riders background there. But yeah, you got Red, Stanley looking good. Pretty standard stuff. Both now made in Thailand. First time for Stanley. People were saying that he was metal die cast, but he's still plastic. Looks a little different. But yeah, this guy has been showing up at some Target stores across the United States and some other stores internationally in Europe and in Mexico, I believe. But still overall, a pretty brand new item that has not hit many stores, even though it should have months ago. All right, now here's the last item that I currently have with me. So this Giga Hall, in order for it to be special, will have to be done in a lot of different segments, most likely. We kind of went through that faster than I anticipated. That's kind of crazy. But yeah, this is probably the best item thus far in this Giga Hall. Very rare, forlorn, underrated. But this was only released in the UK at Toys R Us for people who did not have access to the D23 convention where the Blu-ray Fimic Missile was released, or not even really released, but just kind of put out into the stream of consciousness. You know, it was available, I think, 2011 D23 convention in the confidential black bag. Kind of a weird release. And I think, was this guy also released just regularly with the Blu-ray? He might have been. So this guy might have gotten a bunch of releases, but either way, this is an extremely strange card back display because the card is like super thin. Like look how thin that is even compared to today. I mean, it's a little hard to tell, but you got to look at it closely and you can also easily feel it. Like this almost feels like paper that's been you know printed off of a printer. Like it just feels smoother. You could feel like that paper thin texture. Either way though, very cool exclusive vehicle. Special edition, basically a blue ray metallic chrome Spectre Flame Ransberg Finn McMissile. And it's also in this little box here instead of like a blister. And then the back, it does show other cars released in that same year. And crazily enough, they like put Mater up here, even though he's like on top of the collect them all image. I feel like that's kind of wild. Yeah. Carla Veloso, Jeff, Professor Z, Acer, Graham, the whole squad. Yeah, this does even bring back some nostalgia seeing those guys because those, like that grouping of characters on the back there is so indicative, I can't talk today, of Cars 2's beginnings. And now we're so far past that, which is just crazy to think about. But yeah, that's all I have at this moment. Obviously, it will continue, so stay tuned. All right, we are back in business. For you guys, it's only been about half a second. For me, it's been about three to four weeks, but I've been accruing and accumulating and accruing and accumulating all sorts of good stuff. But even after this segment here is over, I think I'm gonna wait some more and get some more stuff in because Gig Hall Part 20 is a milestone. It needs to be ginormous. I want it to be over an hour. It needs to be a movie, cinematic, blockbuster, pop, popcorn type event that's what we're aiming for so yeah where we're at right now hopefully you're enjoying it so far thanks for staying tuned check out gimme collectibles in the description below if you want some of this stuff because i'm sure he has a bunch of it along with pretty much everything else that they've ever made for disney cars so check them out yeah now this stuff though that's not from Give Me Collectibles. He's not getting this stuff in. This is some prototype canceled car type stuff. And it came from the good friend of mine that I always, always reference in these gig hauls. She's helped me get probably 50% of everything over the last six gig hauls. So huge shout out to her. You know who you are. Thank you so, so much. You have enhanced my collection. You've made me enjoy this hobby that much more because of what you've helped me be able to get. So let's just get right on into it with the first item here being a Miles X-Ride with open hood prototype. And I believe this is one of the first ever engineering prototypes 
to have existed because of course engineering prototypes are the ones with the codes engraved and stamped into them so you can see 230 for miles here and this dates back to 2013 so it is one of the first to have featured that i have not come into contact with anything before 2013 to have a code like this i've seen takeshi and miles here and those are the only from 2013 now you might have seen something before that if so please let me know in the comment section below because that's actually pretty important for documentation purposes but yeah i think 2013 was right when they started doing these engineering prototypes but yeah this is actually very timely because they're re-releasing miles with the hood opening here for thailand 2023 as a new made in thailand variant of course violating their rule of never re-releasing chases but that's a story for a different day because yes this guy was a chase back in the day although Definitely not one of the rare ones. I actually found quite a few of him. Then we have a prototype for a canceled car. Now you guys might be thinking, hey, that's not canceled. I know him. That's like Edamami Sashimi or Daishu Sashimi, one of the sushi chefs. And I really shouldn't have just dropped him like that. But yes, you are correct. However, those guys were only released from China. This, however, is a Thailand prototype. This prototype is from Thailand and it looks great. I love all the colors on it. You have all the plastic parts in red being the forks, the knife, his bandana, and then you got the base in like a teal, the wheels in a turquoise, the fenders turquoise, and the roof as well. Just looks awesome. Really a big fan of this prototype. And again, super grateful to have gone that I've only ever seen one of these, so that makes it so much more special. Here we have Bo Ananza. This is just a straight up canceled plane canceled prototype whatever you want to call it you know all canceled cars are by definition prototypes and i don't know how this person was able to get into the back oh there we go that was easy so yeah here we have bonanza one of the best canceled planes i'd say because it's a model that they never did whereas like some of the model like some of the canceled planes that they have are repeats of previous models you know they're like repaints but bonanza here not so much this is, you know, a double turbine action plane, beautiful. The eyes are a little weird for sure, but a great piece to have for sure. And yeah, one of my favorites. The wings are plastic, but the center piece is metal. The tail wing up here, metal. This bottom portion though is plastic. Yeah, very cool. The double propellers, love it, love it. All right. Here we have one I've been after for a long time, and that is Prototype Vic Vanley. Now, at first glance, you might think that does not look like a prototype to me, and you are pretty much correct. The only difference is the color. Vic Vanley is a much, much darker shade of maroon. He is, you know, practically dark purple plum color. I think plum's a great way to describe him, and a fruit that I haven't had in a while, but now that we're talking about it, I want some plum. This is more of like a bright magenta, almost pink version of Vic that is not very accurate, but it is how some of the first ones were made. And it fits into that category of 2016 prototypes that are slightly different, but almost complete. You know, Mike Fuse with red side view mirrors, Stefan Gremski with an orange door, MA brake drum, but in the Coriander wide track model, the list goes on and on. Oh yeah, you have Darla Vanderson with black unpainted rims. All of those fall into this category where they're not full on prototypes like this, but there's something like something very unique about them that makes them a prototype. And this is, I think the last one I really needed from that year from the known prototypes. And so yeah, very excited about this. Very, very happy about it. I'll have to do a prototype prestige episode on that eventually. And now we have the best of the bunch here, the cream of the crop being prototypes for canceled cars again, but these ones, you know, there's no Thailand China mediation going on here. These are straight up canceled Mia and Tia variants that were supposed to be in a multi-pack, but then when they realized the implications of having the headlights popped up like that, being, you know, I'll let you Google it, but yeah, flashing, and yeah, that's not great. So yeah, you know what? They were like, yeah, we're just gonna, you know what? Why don't you just put those headlights down? Like, can you fold them back in, please? 
Yeah, so Mazda Miata's had this feature of popping up the headlights, and the makers of the first Cars movie utilized that feature to have some sort of innuendo. You know, again, I will leave the details sparse, but yes, they actually intended to release these in a multi pack exclusive to Toys R Us as a part of the Radiator Springs Classic line. In one of the prototype images for that pack, you could see one of Mia or Tia, you can't tell which one it is, with the headlights popped up. They are lit up and the expression is different. And so here are the prototypes for those because you could see the headlights are popped up. These are done in resin. As you could tell, they are. I mean, that's basically a fancy way of saying plastic, but it's slightly different. And they have screws instead of rivets used, and everything is in gray. Like, everything is the same material. Base, body, everything. But yeah, really excited about these two. This is probably, you know, a set that will go down as one of the best in my collection because I've never seen anything like these before. And like I said, you know, when you have a prototype of a canceled car, that's just like double jeopardy, but in a good way. You know what I mean? So yeah, very, very, very pleased about these. Some of the best pieces I've added to my collection in probably a few years. So yeah, super pumped about that. And it doesn't stop there because here we have another just giga crazy prototype for Lightning McQueen here. But this dates back to 2006 when they were starting to develop the line and they thought it was going to be 164 scale like Hot Wheels. So this is a 164 Lightning McQueen here. Just you could tell it is straight out of the mold, the resin. That's why it's got like a sled on it and everything is, you know, it's almost like so stylized, but this is actually very raw in the sense that everything's kind of like pushed toward the back motion blur style and yeah it's almost like grass but it's part of the mold it's got this weird again plastic resin texture and it is one of the only prototypes that i have not the only but one of the only prototypes that came with a certificate of authenticity and is dated with the time that it was sold to me and so it's a little bit you know is it really like how authentic i mean i know it's authentic but the certificate here is definitely something that they just printed off. It's not something that had been established many, many years ago, but you guys can read that. Obviously it's saying it's a 2004 prototype, one piece cast resin, 164 scale. Got a picture of it there. And then it's got an email to David. You know, I really shouldn't have shown that. So I might have to block that off in <laughs> post editing. But yeah, I actually had the contact information for the dude that gave this one away. So pretty crazy stuff if I do say so myself. But yeah, very excited about that. Here we have another one from my good friend, but it's not a prototype. It's just the uber rare Max Schnell's Pity from 2016, along with Jay Schuster and Japheth. They were all in the same case together, but it was poorly distributed. However, Disneyland got in almost all of them. It seems that way. Because when I went to Disneyland in late 2016, this was all you could find. And if I had known better, if I knew that the case would become so rare, I would have bought every single Jay Schuster, Japheth, and Max Schnell's Pity that I could find. However, Max Schnell's Pity was the rarest of the three new cars to that case when I was there. Jay Schuster and Japheth were quite plentiful, and yet they all ended up being pretty rare. You know, again, timely in the sense that Jay Schuster is being re-released this year and is out right now, new title and variant. But yeah, package not the greatest, but when you're talking about super rare cars like this, it really doesn't matter, at least to me. All right, let's move right along to some newer stuff that I recently found in this store. We're gonna just kind of gloss over this because again, it's something new. Something I've been just, you know, salivating at the mouth for is Cryptid Buster Lightning McQueen as a color changer. I was teeming with excitement when I found this. I basically had a petite mal seizure in the aisle when I found it. I couldn't contain myself. I was so thrilled to have finally found this color changer that is so revolutionary due to its inaccuracies and basicness. And yeah, oh my God, I was just so thrilled. And yeah, it changes from red to green. It's really, truly earth shattering. So yeah, guys. Can't wait to review that for you. I really am super pumped. And then we got some new five packs exclusive to Walmart. This one here has finish line Lightning McQueen along with a bunch of other duplicates and <laughs> pretty typical five pack dwellers. Like I think all of these have been in a five pack recently. But yeah, it's nice to have finish line McQueen there because he is one of the rarer releases and one of the more desirable cars in general. 
He was released last year from Thailand, and so now you get a second chance to get him from Thailand because that is where these are now made while they used to be made in, of course, Vietnam. But they've changed that now. They are now made in Thailand. So keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in mind. There are no more Vietnam variants. But what's more exciting than even that is this one because it contains a new release of Breaker Boggs. Now, is it so new? Like, is it technically new? Because he's being simultaneously released as a single and that's being found at Target stores. But of course, I haven't found that yet. So I bought the five pack. However, I probably will hold off on opening this for a little bit to see if I can get that one. Or maybe I'll just bust it open because I you know, am very impatient and would love to review it for you guys. But yeah, it's very similar to previous Demolition Derby Thunder Hollow five packs they've done. So I would prefer not to open this for just a pity. But it is it does feel good to have found a new car that I don't already have being breaker box. That's really, you know, not something that often happens these days. You guys might be thinking, what do you mean you don't find a new car in the store? Well, like I get so much stuff online these days, like I'll get a new case like with Am Rodriguez, you know, what's his name? West Philanthropist. And then I'll find them maybe in a store like a month or two later and it'll be cool. It'll be fun. But I already have them. So while I'm finding something I haven't found before, it's nothing too groundbreaking. But this, I don't already have. So it's literally my first exposure to Breaker Boggs here. The name is just so cool. It's you know one of those what the hell names. It's like, <laughs> who came up with that? Breaker Boggs. <laughs> Boggs, all right. And now I found one of these bad boys. Again, something I was very excited about, even more so than the color changer. Truly though, I actually do like this pack. I like the accessories and I will be reviewing it soon for you guys. Nile Speedcone Gearson Marshall. Although it's like my third or fourth Gearson Marshall I have loose now, which is a little bit excessive, but you guys know me, I like to do it that way. And I will be reviewing it in the same video as this. Doc Hudson and Leroy Hemming in the same style pack. Now I also want to mention last segment, so this video, but like, 20 minutes ago, I showed that Mini Adventures 2 pack. I actually showed that in Giga Hall Part 19, I think. So disregard that. Sometimes there's some crossover, stuff like that happens. I also did finally get the Aaron kind of fast three pack, uh, the Mini Racers line here. So it's something else I'll be reviewing and waiting for, you know, a time where I have some more minis to unbox though. You know, I do have that. I have the Professor Z one here as well. Good stuff, but I want to wait until I get, you know, Royce Rebsley and all those other new minis that are coming out right now. Getting back to some of the online scores, I did open this already, but we have Echo Franzarelli. There was a Chinese eBay seller that posted like a ton of old planes in the package, which a lot of these are quite rare and they were listed at good prices. So I decided to snatch them up and they didn't come in the best of packagings. In fact, I got two Franzarellis. And this is how the other one showed up. Yeah, just completely decimated. So that was not ideal. I did get it refunded though, so yay. But yeah, you have Franzarelli here, you have Echo. At the time, Echo was a re-release by a couple years, so that wasn't anything too exciting. Same thing with Franz here, slash Fliegenhosen. I love how they name him like that because he has his dual personalities. But yeah, this was such a weird time for the Planes line because they were introducing these new series like Congrats Dusty, which was like 2016 versus 2015, and yet it got cut off very soon thereafter. So yeah, you can see here on the back, a couple of re-releases in the series, but it could have had so much potential. I mean, look at all those cars and planes they could have done. Here you have Little King, another very rare plane because it was only released twice, one of which was only in Canada. <laughs> Excuse me. And then you have Jolly Wrench's Dusty. So again, a re-release, you know, twice or thrice over, but still nice to have in the package for sure. Tango. I love how they like name these. Like they put Tango in quotes. They capitalize Echo and Bravo. It's like, have some consistency, please. Please. All right. What are we on to next? You know what? We're going to have to break this up a bunch. Let's open... We're gonna open up this box right here. It's a very long, narrow box. I know exactly what's in here. I've actually had 
this box sitting in my closet for weeks, just waiting to feature it in a giga haul. I think someone actually sent this to me on Instagram. Maybe if you did, like, feel free to message me again and say like, hey, like, dude, that was me. You're welcome. But either way, thank you, because they sent me a really good deal. It was a hauler set, you know, a 2010 Gill here, which is pretty cool. Gill is nothing too wild, but it is still a rare hauler for 2023, especially on the 2010 package. And also Gerald, Gerald, Jerry recycled batteries on 2009 packaging. So not as rare as him on 2010 packaging, but still quite rare and obviously a very iconic hauler. And I uh, have two of them, you know, in the same lot for a great deal was something I couldn't pass up. I think I even made an offer on it, which brought the price down even lower. So I was quite thrilled about that, and it's nice to finally open them up. All right, let's just keep grinding along here. What is in this box now? We got some nice bubble wrap. Oh man, I've had this one for weeks now as well. Got some nice bubble wrap. Another oldie here, another one of those packaging variants or I'll explain but yeah this is Taiye Deco Dura his first released in 2012 that was only international primarily Australia along with Taco Truck Mater both of them started off as the exact same in terms of rarity but then Taiye got re-released in 2016 thus decreasing his value tremendously like this even though it is released and produced on the same exact scale as Taco Truck Mater, which goes for 200 plus dollars these days, it's been devalued to like 20, 25, 30 bucks because the 2016 version came out. So that just goes to show you guys, if you know something's going to be re-released and it's a rare car, like Fair Game, for example, was, sell something. Like if you have an extra, sell it because the new version even though it's different packaging, even though it might be a variant, it will devalue the old one tremendously. So I was able to snag this for cheap, even though I think I already have one of these to be completely frank with you. But you know me, you can criticize me in the comments. I'm ready for it. I also got this. This was kind of a weird buy for me. Like I really don't give two squirts of urine about this one because it's two releases that are singles. But I wanted to make sure I had it just in case the case with Bella Cadaver got swept under the rug. Although I think it is included in the case with Chiefdis and Luis and Luis and all of them. So I guess I kind of flaked and screwed that over. But it's on a nice card. So hey, that's a win for me. I will take it. Nope, until I drop it. All right, what's next, guys? What is next? I have a huge box in here, but we're gonna have to save that because I have a football fantasy draft, a fantasy football draft in like five minutes here that I'm going to have to cut the video for. So yes, this looks like an absolute quagmire. I'm not even sure if I wanna get into this. I see like a loose blister. I'm a little scared. Actually, I think we'll be okay. I think that loose blister was just used like, I think this was just used for like packaging, so I guess that's okay. Just don't scare me like that. All right, lots of stuff going on. All right, we have Paul Valdez here, so another old caller, very rare. Three minutes until my fantasy drafts, holy cow. All right, yeah, so Paul Valdez on American packaging, very rare. Super underrated release, to be honest with you. It's so cool that he's like drinking one of the oil cans as well. So yeah, he actually looks like a very bright orange. I feel like the one I have is not that bright, but I guess it is. It's literally right behind me in my case. So I just looked and verified. But yeah, very cool. And yeah, it's kind of nostalgic. You know, I got three of these old haulers all in the same video. So always good to see. And then also included in there was... This, an international packaging of off-road Mater from Radio Springs 500 and a half, which is a pretty rare release, believe it or not. This version of Mater became quite rare. Nothing like too, too crazy, but it has. And so I was able to snag 
this one and it being on international packaging makes it even more special. So yeah, guys, we're going to cut just for now. Again, for you, it'll be half a second, but for me, it'll be a whole fantasy football draft. Let me know how you're enjoying it so far. And if you've gotten anything lately and wish me luck on my draft, even though it'll be done long before you see this video. Like I haven't even released Giga Hall part 19 yet. That's how backed up we are, but in a good way, you know, it's because a lot of new stuff's been coming out, taking priority over the Giga Halls. So yeah. All right, guys. Okay. We're back. The draft is over. Feel pretty good about it. Got Trevor Lawrence, which I'm pretty excited about. Let's just tear on open this box here. This is a bundle I got off my cards. The first time I ever bundled any items, but basically it's when you like take multiple items from the same seller and then make an offer on all of them and they all get shipped together in a so-called bundle. So that is what this is. And I have only like a few more hours to rate the seller actually. So I figured I should probably open this just to make sure everything is okay. Otherwise it will automatically give him a like good rating and that's you know probably going to be fine, but cause it looks like he packaged them all very well. But if you like forgot something, I could get screwed over and I don't want to get screwed over guys. It's one of the big things in life you probably want to avoid. So yeah, we're going to start with this little satchel. I honestly don't even remember all of what I ordered. So this is going to be pretty fun to go through. Okay. I do. Okay. So here we have a steel blue Jackson storm. I actually still need one of these loose. The only one I have loose is the prototype or I have multiple of the prototypes loose. So I probably won't open this one, but it is one step closer to that. But yeah, you can see on the back here, that's why I have loose are one of the ones with the codes on the hood there, which is actually kind of crazy that they're using a stock image with a prototype. That's kind of cool, but yeah, nice card. Very excited. One of the most obscure and now quite forlorn releases of the last few years. Speaking of forlorn are the silver cars that they released only in Europe in 2013. Yeah. So they did of course the Kmart ones in 2012 and then they did them all again in 2015. But in between there was a special Europe silver series in which they did the exclusive Hudson Hornet Piston Cup Lightning McQueen in silver. I'm not sure if that one's even included in here, but I mainly just want all these other ones because this is, you know, a pretty rare packaging for, you know, this whole slew of them, this whole series. And again, super forlorn. Like I forget about it all the time and even telling you guys about it right now, like think about it. This is a full on international only series. And although it's the silver line that we already got, but it's actually really cool to see all these in this format. So yeah, here you have Miguel Camino. We have Max Schnell. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that all these silver cars got released three times at least. Some of them four, like Miguel got re-released in 2020. So did Raul Cerrul. So there you have Lewis Hamilton. And yeah, the packages are actually really nice because it shows, you know, the one you have on the back here as a stock image, like in silver, along with all the other ones you can collect. So it was a nice 10 car series, which is pretty substantial. So the rest of those should be in here somewhere. I'm not sure when we'll get to them because it looks like here we have some final lap cars, which, you know, are always nice and nostalgic. My room's an absolute mess right now. So yeah, I ordered this. I didn't really need everything in this lot of final lap releases, but I honestly was going after more of the basic ones like Sheriff here, because believe it or not, some of these quote unquote basic like re-releases from the final lap series are rarer than the new releases. Maybe it's just because they're easier to identify and these are more obscure. No one selling them or who would sell them thinks anyone would buy them because they're so common. But like, for example, you could find a lot of Timothy time zone true coats on eBay in this final lap packaging, but it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to find a sheriff in final lap packaging. So actually very excited about this, even though you guys might be thinking you're crazy sheriff. So boring, but you know what, for me, who's been collecting so long and who has you know, not to, you know, I don't know. It's so weird to say, but like I have a lot of stuff. Okay. So at this point I'm trying to get some more of the obscure items, like a final lab collection sheriff here. 
Same thing with Mather. <laughs> this is awesome to me. Like this gets me very excited to see just a standard Mather on the final lap packaging. And it's on a very good carb. The carb backs on these were so boring. Like I hated this here. Although, you know, it did show you a lot of what was coming. I just hated the aesthetic of it. But yeah, there's that. And then same similar thing here with Chick Hicks. But if you guys remember from a few Giga Hauls ago, I did already get, I think it was, yeah. I got Final Lap Chick in like December, so that was kind of a big deal for me. But yeah, here's another one. Of course, we did get Timothy, which is you know such a cool release, but <laughs> he does get a little overshadowed right now. But yeah, honestly, this is a great release and only re-release one time. So there should actually be a few more of those somewhere in here, but looks like we're going to hopscotch over to another super obscure series being the Micro Drifter and 155 scale diecast collaboration, if you will, the mix, the combo pack. So yeah, they did four of these, I believe. And again, it's something that I never got around to picking up. And I think they were maybe sold at Kohl's or some other weird retailer like that. But yeah, I think these were like five bucks at the time. You got the full scale version and the Micro Drifter in this cool packaging that featured London in the background. You have Big Ben or Bentley in the back. So yeah, super cool, super weird. And just something, yeah, that Mattel did that a lot of people just kind of gloss over, especially at this point when it's 10 plus years old. So yeah, Max Chanel, Jeff, Raul, Nigel. Love these stock images where it actually shows you the micro drifter as well. Just seems like really put together, really thought out. And it's kind of unfortunate they only did four of these. So here you have Raul. <laughs> so yeah, these must have been some weird retailer to put that sticker on there. I feel like it was Kohl's. That just kind of rings a bell. I don't think I ever found any of them myself though. Max Schnell. Ah, let them loose, let them out. Let him out, Jeff Gorvet. Love this guy. And they're all in good packages, so that's very exciting to see. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I got a little bit of a cough. Not sick, though. Don't worry. All right, here we have some more final lap releases. I'm just going to slide them right out of the back here. So here we have Flow with Trey. Now, this was a new release, so it's not going to be as, you know, glamorous you know reverse glamorous almost a sheriff from mater but still one of those more basic characters good stuff Let's see what else we got up in here Let me tear this to widen the opening a little bit there we go make it a little easier on ourselves oh my gosh it's Vern Vern's become such a meme in the cars community. So yeah, love seeing this guy, but he is, you know, he was brand new to the final lap series. So this isn't one that I'm necessarily after. This one, this one is 110%. The main reason I actually bought this lot, and that is the King on final lap packaging. This might be one of the best the King releases ever. Just seeing this guy on what a lot of people did think to be, I mean, the gold foil, the final literally lap. Like, I personally thought this time this was it. And so, it is really cool to see the king like this. The blister is a little bit smushed, though. That's unfortunate. Of all the ones that could have been smushed, it had to be the king, huh? Are you kidding me? And then, last but not least, is one of my favorites, but not one that I was particularly after. And that stuff rocks here. I always thought he should have been a thinner pickup truck, though. More like Chris Ripstopsky. But yeah, I love his expression because you guys know why? He's looking to the side. You guys know me so well. And I would assume this one here is just going to be the remainder of the silver releases, I think. It would appear that way. So you have Mr. Jeff Gorvet. Now, in 2015, when they released these exclusive to Walmart, they gave all of them their own silver artwork. So they were actually silver and animated, 
which was just, you know, probably a pretty easy Photoshop job. It wasn't probably anything too strenuous, but it's something that took two times or three times rather in order to achieve. Here you have Francesco. Now it really will be interesting to see if the seller included the Hudson Horn Piston Cup McQueen because that would be pretty awesome to have. I don't think he did though. I think it's everything but that one. Here you have Raul Rule. And that's why the lot was, you know, as reasonable as it was. And then here you have Nigel Gearsley. So it actually looks like it's missing a few. It's missing, I think, Shoot to the Roki and Carlo Veloso were not included, which is fine. I'll have to look over it, though. But yeah, here you have Nigel. Very nice. We have a lot of stuff on the table right now, like a lot of packaged cars. This is really cool, guys. My room is such a mess, but this feels like Christmas a little bit. And yeah, so I don't know. We're maybe at the 40, 45 minute mark in this giga haul. We're not done yet, guys. We're not All done. All right. We're going to just keep on rolling. Who knows how long this is going to go, but I do think I am going to do a special separate video where I go through my favorite item, my favorite score from each giga haul for a total of 20 items. And yeah, I think that'll be a fun little separate video to celebrate the 20 episodes that we've done of this awesome series. Again, appreciate your support. And if you've made it this far in the video, you're awesome. Let's get into the scores here. So kind of a full circle moment. We have another air in which one of the tires or wheels is unpainted. And it is a 2022 Sally, as you can see here. I just grabbed it on eBay, very inexpensive. Airs do not sell for much. And here's the one that we had earlier in the Giga Hall, which I probably recorded the segment with him over a month ago. But yeah, it's kind of cool. They are very similar and yet different in the sense that their release was this 2007 this is 2022 so 16 years apart kind of crazy right now some of these scores here on the left i actually found in a store i found this just yesterday at walmart but you won't see it in any of my other videos you won't see it in the hunt because it just kind of caught my eye and it is actually very similar to the car i drive irl a little bit different in terms of the model and the color and all that stuff, but I had to pick this up. Originally, I thought I was going to have a Camaro, so that's why in a hunt or a giga haul eons ago, I had an Auto World Camaro, but I ended up getting a Corvette, so had to get this. And I've been wanting to get it online for a long time, but I just happened to find it at Walmart, so I was like, oh, no way. Let me snag that. And then I did finally find some of the new 2022, 2023 rather, two packs at Target and Meyer. Meyer has been much more fruitful for me than Target. I've only found little pickings at Target. And this is the only two pack that I haven't featured in any other video. I do intend to eventually open up and review the Thailand variants here of Dragon McQueen. So keep that in mind, guys. I already did Drift Party Mater. And it does kind of suck that I'm going to have to open up another and have a duplicate. But I really want to see... Dragon McQueen here out of the package because he looks pretty awesome and this is a beautiful two-pack to look at like just a visually stunning two-pack in terms of the art same thing with Kabuto and Kabuto Ninja but yeah the way they incorporate Tokyo Mater into the main line this year is really awesome I have to say I really do like it and I can't wait to review this set and it's kind of a very underrated one even though it was included in the last two cases Bella Cadaver, on the other hand, was only in the last case. So, unfortunately, it looks like she may end up being very, very rare. Now, I did finally cave in and get this Mini Racers 10-pack off Amazon with the first look at Mato up here. It will give me Royce Revsley, who I need, and Erin kind of fast, although I already have the three-pack with her. So, that kind of stinks, but I guess, I don't know. I didn't really look at that. I didn't really pay attention to that. And then we also have Rodat Marker in there, I guess. But I'm pretty sure from my last Mini Racer unboxing, I already have her loose. And yeah, this came from Amazon, and it's absolutely mangled. Like, in horrible condition. It's got all these stupid labels all over it. So definitely a piece to open here without a doubt. But yeah, Mato looks great. Royce looks really nice. So excited to get them. And then in a couple days here, I will do, well, actually, again, I have no idea when Giga Hall 20 will come out. It actually is. You know, it's funny. This is the first time I'm recording Giga Hall 20 in which 
Giga Hall 19 is out. So I just posted that like a week ago. And so it will be time soon to eventually post this video, but I think I will try and get the mini racer unboxing out before this Giga Hall because I have the new three packs with Margaret Motorway, McQueen with headset, and Ivy with the moss on her and all that stuff. I have those coming, so I want to include them. And it'll be really fun because they'll have literally every mini that you could possibly think of. Although, yeah, yeah, that reminds me because I was like, wait a second, I don't have like Mad Scientist Mater or any of those ones yet. And yeah, I do now from Get Me Collectibles. You guys know I love him. And this box contains not only, I think this here is the Mad Scientist Mater because it's the purple one. And then all these green ones are the newest wave with Noriyuki, Speed Demon, and Doug Crankle. So very cool. These are brand new minis. And again, it will make for a great unboxing to have all this new stuff. So yeah, very excited about that. There's a whole bunch of duplicates in here as well that I don't care about. But three of them I care about quite a bit. So yeah, there's that. And let me toss the paper over there. Then we have some Jim Scavenger Customs that I've been hogging for a while. You know, there are so many Jim Scavenger Customs that I need to review that I haven't yet. And if you're a member of the channel in terms of like you're a, you know, you have the membership subscription every month, you guys would know what some of those customs are because I have posted sneak peeks to those videos. And yeah, I'll just leave it at that. So if you want to see those in advance, Definitely consider joining as a member, as a docketer, as I call them. And yeah, it's only $1.99 a month, so it gives you free access to a whole bunch of stuff. You could write in and ask me anything. Literally, I'd give you my phone number if you asked for it. And yeah, here is a next-gen vinyl toupee pity. Obviously, maybe not super accurate to the movie, but it definitely does its job. And I already have the vinyl toupee crew chief from Jim Scavenger that I reviewed a long time ago. And so it'll be nice to tack this one on, although I don't think he'll be beginning his own review. So kind of sucks to be him for being such a late bloomer. And I don't know if I will do a video on this one either because I don't have the pity yet. Although this has to be one of my favorites Jim has ever done because I just love the unique color. And it is, of course, a next-gen fiber fuel crew chief based on Thomas Hatfield's design and it is just gorgeous. I love the font, the thin font, and this beige creamy color. Just like the next gen, of course, and it looks fantastic. So it's kind of weird, like you have to do these in pairs. You know, Jim Scavenger will use like a Ray Reverham and a Laura Spinwell. And so you always have to, you can't just like kind of say like, hey, I want a pity or hey, I want a crew chief. You gotta get both. And they could be different, you know, it could be like I have here, Fiber Fuel and Vinyl Tupé, but it makes sense like if you're going to buy him the materials that two pack that has both of them you want to get both or you want to get one of each if you know what i'm saying if you're catching my drift i know it's a little confusing so yeah jim scavenger love his custom as per usual and oh man yeah this is actually a sneak peek as to what's in the other box a little htb action there i got the boxes switched up this is very exciting. Oh my God, such a great color on these. Emerald is only the only way to really describe these. And yeah, I love the gradient on the 86 there. Of course, these are all very fictional in the sense that not only do they not appear in Cars 3, but they don't match the NASCAR releases that Mattel did last year. You know, they did Go Go Logano and then Rowdy Revan Bush for these sponsors, respectively. But these team members don't match those paint schemes. This is all based on Thomas Hatfield's designs, which, yeah, they're kind of better. They're actually modernized, unlike what Mattel did. Granted, I love the NASCAR line, but none of it is really modernized and really vibes with what Cars 3 actually meant for the next gens, you know what I mean? And then he also did a custom of the pit stop barrier here or crash wall, whatever you want to call it with HTB. Looks really good, very nice. Appreciate him for tossing that in there. And I will be reviewing this pair for sure. I think a lot of people would be interested in a next gen team HTB. And yeah, here's the little pity. 
It's like Bruiser Bukowski, but on roids. <laughs> Bruiser Bukowski is back, and he's better than ever. Look at this guy. <laughs> That's awesome. Mattel should do some more of these, because clearly... <laughs> They're very popular, or they would be very popular, and Jim Scavenger is literally just taking all of their business. Jim Scavenger's like, yeah, don't mind if I do. And then all the way from the UK to conclude this segment of Giga Hall Part 20 are two very awesome cars, although very different. Yes, sir, we have the 2010 lenticular release chase of Luigi and Guido with paint rollers and bucket. Oh my gosh. Now this release probably was the rarest and still is the rarest of the 2010 lenticular releases. I love how they separate Guido with rollers and tray and then Luigi with the bucket there. <laughs> As if Luigi really has the bucket. He's just making Guido do it all. But yeah, this was such a rare release because it was mostly only released internationally. There is an American carded version of it out there because it did hit the U.S., but like in dribs and drabs. I don't think it really hit Target, which is where these were sold. They were exclusive. Like the lenticular line as a whole is exclusive to Target. Actually, no, no, no. Sorry, that's completely wrong. The final lap collection was exclusive to Target. The lenticulars were sold everywhere, which was kind of backwards in my opinion. But anywho, I don't believe it hit major retailers in the U.S. I was only nine years old. But I think it hit stores like the equivalent, the modern day equivalent of like what it would be for something to hit like Ross or TJ Maxx, you know. And mostly it was, I think, in the UK. So yeah, that's what you're looking at here. Super rare release, even though they were re-released in like 2016 or something. I think 2015 or 2016 with fixed eyes in the Toys R Us Radiator Springs Classic line in a five pack. So they've since been released and better because... Fixed eyes is always preferable or preferable to these alien bug eyes that the lenticulars were, especially on cars with smaller windshields like these where there's not as much, you know, of a gap in between the eyes. So it never, ever really looks too good. Like look at Luigi there. It looks horrible. So yeah, novel piece right there. And then here you have the newest of the new, the Quadra Torcasar. It really is off-putting to me though that the artwork is of the baby quad because this is one big daddy quad. He <laughs> is huge. This guy would definitely be a deluxe if he was released a couple years ago when deluxes actually existed. But yeah, guys, the plan for this here is to keep him in the package because he's on international card again, all the way from the UK. But I will be getting the full Case K, which is where this guy emerged from, in soon. So I will unbox Case K, and then I will take the quad from that case and open it. So thinking about, I mean, again, I'm sure that those videos have already come out by now. So I'm just preaching to the choir. I'm literally speaking, you know, it doesn't matter at all because all those videos would have come out by now. But I guess it'll be kind of fun for you guys to see the behind the scenes, my thought process behind or, you know, after the matter or whatever, before the matter rather. But yeah, this guy looks awesome. And I'm sure you guys have seen my review on him. But if not, definitely check it out because oh I can't wait to open them up. I am honestly upset that I have to wait until I get the other one in because this guy looks awesome. And yeah, I actually bought him from the UK before I was able to get the full case because I was unsure if it would ever hit the US. You know, it could end up being like Dana Crankoff from last year or other situations like Sadiq and Kristoff long time ago where they only hit the UK and then you kind of get screwed over. So I made sure to get it. Don't make those mistakes anymore. And yeah, it looks like it will hit the US at least in some capacity. But Case K has already been at Walmart for a couple weeks now and it is the half version. And thus, it excludes the poor Quadratorx Sar, Dexter Hoover, Tubbs Pacer, Vladimir Trunkov, and a couple others. It does include Mato, Mallory Carhut, and Patty though, but obviously, those I think will be a little bit more easily gettable than quad here based on the fact that Mato will be really released next year, Mallory's in case L, and Patty is just a Thailand variant. All right, guys, that's not everything because I have some more boxes coming in inbound. And here we go again. All right, so I got a couple planes in the other day and I actually ordered Joey Dundee, but the seller sent me Yalkla, who's about 
three times as rare as Joey Dundee. So I'd say that actually worked out pretty well. It's not on a great card or anything, but Yalkla happens to be one of the rarest planes that Mattel has ever released actually. So very happy about that. And yeah, it will go into the carded collection. I don't even believe I have a carded Yalkla at all, which is by the way, the director of planes, last name backwards, Clay Hall. So yeah, that's why the name is so weird because it's kind of like a square peg forced through a round hole. Doesn't really work, but that's what they did. And then Brody here I also got. He's a pretty rare plane, but nothing too, too crazy. This is, I believe it was Barbara. Yeah, Barbara's husband. So a little lore there from Planes Fire and Rescue. You have Firefighter Dusty. I need to do some more planes videos because they are so underrated and some of them are just so cool. And there is so much custom potential as well that is untapped for the most part. And then I did get a couple more of the D100 Cruisin' Lightning McQueens from Target's website because they did put them up for $5 a piece. Or you could buy $20 worth of stuff and it'll be a free add-on. Now they didn't come in great condition or anything like that, but... It is what it is. Can't really do a whole lot about it. Cruise and Lightning McQueen, like I couldn't even, like I could get a full refund and return them, but it's not like they'll carefully ever pack them. It's just like Amazon. It's so automated and there's so many levels of bureaucracy that they would never be able to rectify that. You just have to get super lucky. <laughs> super duper lucky. Like this one's actually not bad. Oh, there's a crease right along the center there. These are slightly different than the international versions of the card, so keep that in mind. There is a card variant out there. All right, and then this will lead right into another video I'm doing that probably has already come out by now. I would hope so, at least. A new Mini Racers unboxing video because I got in the newest three packs here. You have Mossy Ivy, Margaret Motorway, and Cryptid Buster McQueen, which is awesome because for me, all three of these are brand new. These two were in the not most recent, but the most second recent wave of singles, but I didn't get them because I knew that the three pack was coming. So that was a very good decision because now instead of just having this one being new, all three of them are. And yeah, that's called efficiency right there. So yeah, very excited to open these all up. Ivy actually looks fantastic, and so does Margaret. So excited about those. And not so much about this one, but it is nice to get McQueen with the headset there, I guess. But yeah, not happy about two more duplicates, Jackson Storms and Rusty's Cruz Ramirez's. I already have enough of them. But yeah, McQueen does look pretty awesome. Lightning McQueen with headset. Hopefully they do a 155 scale version of him soon. Should be easy enough, right? And I think we're going to conclude the Giga Hall on this. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but I don't believe I ever got like the Chinese version of Ponchi Wipeout with the blue eyelids, like the corrected version of him. So I was able to get a couple from China off eBay. And yeah, I decided to get a few just because they're so cheap and you never know what the conditions of these will be. There's a little gash right there. But man, he does look really clean with the blue eyelids instead of black. And especially coming from China. Like I've seen the Thailand version of him and it doesn't look as good as these are looking right now. So yeah, very happy about that. Would have been cool if one of these happened to be a prototype. Because you just never know when things come from China. You might get a random lucky prototype. But yeah, guys, that I think might do it for Giga Hall 20. That was a lot of stuff, a lot of different segments. I don't really have a whole lot more coming in the mail, so it probably is a good time to end it. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and supporting this series over the last year and a half. I hope to do 20 more of these parts as long as you guys continue to like them and comment and support them. That would mean a lot. All right, guys, let me know in the comments below. Have you gotten anything lately? Any new scores, finds in the stores, whatever it may be, comment it down below. And I will see you guys soon for another video. Bye now.